spring is on the way and all this apparently goes with it. To read the reports of the dispute, you'd think that everyone's a governor down in Georgia. First, there was Herman Talmadge, appointed by the legislature. His father had been elected, but died. Then there was Ellis Arnold, the previous governor, who declared that the lieutenant governor, Melvin Thompson, should be governor, and refused to hand over his office to Talmadge. Talmadge, supported by state troops, took it over by force at night, and this is what he has to say. The legislature elected me governor of Georgia by a vote of 161 to 87. I have accepted my election, have taken my oath of office, and am now at my desk attending to the duties of my office. Next morning, when Arnold went to the office, he found Talmadge there and refused admittance. He set up another office in the Capitol building. Arnold said he was still governor until Thompson could take over. All rather confusing for the people of Georgia, but Arnold was perfectly clear. I fear no man. I stand alone without the military to defend the Constitution and laws of Georgia and to preserve the rights of the people to see that the man they intended to be governor is installed and that this office is not given to a pretender and a usurper. The man that has been so-called and illegally elected uh, governor by the legislature was never a candidate. He claims the office purely by inheritance and Georgia is not a monarchy yet. During the night, however, Talmadgeites took over Arnold's improvised office as well, and in the morning, he found a Talmadge man at his desk. Arguments followed, but Arnold now had no office from which to govern. Meanwhile, Thompson was sworn in as Lieutenant Governor, which, according to Arnold and Thompson himself, makes him the new governor. So Arnold, as he'd promised earlier, resigned, and left the matter to be fought out between Thompson and Talmadge. By the way, I hope you're following this. I'm sure the people of Georgia didn't know how many governors they had at this point. Finally, arguing in Talmadge's office, neither Thompson nor Talmadge would give way. All they agreed was that the court should decide. Mr. Ben-Gurion's house in Tel Aviv was the